hello, welcome back. Thank you to everyone who sent questions in after the ADHD homeschool video. I will attach that video at the end if you haven't seen it. So what I'm gonna talk about today is, I have another video where I'm gonna do ADHD sleep because we used to have insane sleep problems for my son who has ADHD and now, like, I mean, 90% improved, so I will tell you what we do. And, but today we're talking about ADHD math. It was one of the questions I got in the comment is to which math works and which math doesn't work because I've tried all of them. I mean, I think all of them, but a lot of them. And so of course there's no wrong math. Like if the math works for you, great. I'm gonna tell you some of these and why they didn't work. But of course, of course I have a question of the day and a product of the day. So the question of the day is, someone asked me, what's the best history for ADHD? If you have, if you're secular, um, I would recommend Curiosity Chronicles, but wait just a little bit till they're a little bit older, just a little bit, um, just so it's it all stick. So I would say about, I would maybe age eight, start Curiosity Chronicles um, if you wanted to, or you could do another good one is the Layers of Learning. I think it's Layers of Learning. I'll attach it at the end. I did the China unit. Um, it was pretty good as well. But again, I would wait, it's not for younger kids. So what I would do for younger kids is I like um, a Becca, the Abeka American History, it's like 20 bucks for the book. I want to say it's grade two, it might be grade one. But anyway, it's uh, it just goes through basically the history of America, but very simple, very, like not a lot of words and text, which I think is super important at, for, at least for my child, for that particular child. And, or you can just get, just get books. Like I know, just get books. But I mean like picture books about whatever area of history they are specifically interested in. And if not, just occasionally, hey, it's 4th of July, let's read about, I don't know, America. You know what I mean? Like whatever holiday it is, let's read about this, read about that. So that's what I did. And I often show you on here books that I love um, that were a big hit or a great hit. Um, in here, <laughs> The Barbarians is an example of one. It's kind of like, um, my son just requested it again the other day we got from the library. It's The Barbarians and it's basically, it's not really what you call a history book except that it's about what happens if Vikings invade your home instead of ants. <laughs> so it's kind of interesting, but anyway, it was a hit. So I wanna show you a book of the day because you know I love books. I have a problem, <laughs> I really do. <laughs> but it's a good problem to have, I suppose. So this is, I think I got it on thrift books or I might've bought, I, I don't know, but it was, it's the magnificent book of Creatures of the Abyss. I'm telling you, look at these pictures. So the, there's only one thing I noticed in here that was seemed somewhat factually incorrect, but so they, t but I'll, I'll show it to you, but look, so vampire squids, and then it's got like just five points about them. Now, when we do science, we're always reading. We, um, eating, <laughs> when we do science, we're always reading. We're always eating. So this is the ET sponge. This is the deep sea siphonophore, okay? Now here it says it's the size of a hand. They found one to be 150 feet long. So it's not, so this is for some odd reason, doesn't seem accurate to me, but it does say here that they're normal, like they found one that's 100 feet long. So it is massive. Um, so the siphonophore is here. The siphonophore is, uh, whatever, you don't need me to educate you on the siphonophore because I don't know, maybe y'all watched Octonauts and you've heard of Siphonophore or it doesn't matter, but the humpback anglerfish. Does it have in here? It does. It has one of the oldest, the oldest. Now, hold on. Phantom jelly. Okay, good. They don't call jellyfish anymore jellyfish. They call them sea jellies because a fish needs a backbone and gills in order to be considered a fish. <laughs> in case you want to be technical. But the Greenland shark, this sucker is like I want to say 400 years old it can live up to. Oh my God, and look at its gross eyes. I, I won't tell you about that, it's gross. But anyway, yeah, there you go. They're pregnant for eight years. I don't know what your pregnancy was like, but oh my gosh. I was pregnant 10 months with, with my first son. 10 months. Whoa, whoa. Two, two days after my birthday, he was finally born. And they wanted to do something. I was like, nope, he'll come when he's ready. And he did, he did. But uh, yeah, so anyway, whatever, whatever, whatever. I think it's a great book and it is called The Magnificent Book of Creatures of the Abyss. Okay, so let's talk about what works and what doesn't. Again, my opinion, my opinion, I did buy every curriculum and try them all out. So what doesn't work is CTC math. The reason CTC math didn't work, it's an online math homeschool program. You kind of have to check for their homeschool rate if you go to use it. It's still cool. It's cool, it's great, you choose what, 
topics you want them to cover in math and then it grades it for you it keeps track of it all it's great i mean you still have to go through the trouble of pulling up the laptop opening it up this is me this is too much work but it really was to open up the laptop and then go through and then log them in or you could log in or whatever the problem is is that if he understood a concept now he is advanced in math um not in other subjects but in math he's advanced in the problem is, is that if you understand a concept, you still have to answer at least 10 questions on that particular concept within a concept. So we're not saying like, whatever, it was still, that's how you're tested is it minimum 10, I wanna say like 10 questions after every concept is learned. Well, if he understands a concept and once he gets the gist of it, he wants to do just three questions on it. I'm okay with that. And then sometimes we'll practice outside of that a different way using different games and some cool fun stuff that we do. Okay, so great. The problem is, is again, so it's not gonna grade you accurately because if you got those three questions right, well, it's not gonna be like, oh, good for you, you get to move on. No, because normal students, normal students, quote unquote normal, I don't know what else to call them, can sit down, do 10 questions and then move on, right? If your son can't and he's not able to yet or your child is not able to yet, I would honestly put it off six months and be like, you know what, we'll try again, whatever program it is, whatever program it is, and we'll try again in so many months and then just do the bare minimum you have to do to get by um, to meet state requirements or whatever. And then whatever, that's what I would do. That's what I recommend, especially when they're really little. But another program we didn't like is Math Mammoth. It's great. It is freaking great. It is a great program. It is open and go. It's open and go. I mean, it, I've never seen a more open and go curriculum in my entire life. And so it is fabulous. If you want to take it on the go, you're traveling in your RV. I don't know. People do that. They do that. They travel in their RV, wherever. You just bring a book. You open it up. There you go. There you go. If you got questions or whatever, you can look up more videos, but you do not have to. It is explained right there. It is colorful. It is bright. It has about 100 questions a page. They are all beautiful. They are bright. You are not meant to do them all. But the problem is, is if someone opens that page and they see, and even though I have sectioned off, I've put dots next to the questions that we are covering. And even though we do some orally because handwriting wasn't a strength early on, it's still, it could seem so overwhelming when you're looking at like 60 questions a page. It may not be a hundred, but like 60 questions a page. I mean, it's a lot of questions. And so even though you're like, okay, we're only going to cover this box still, it can be very, just a little overwhelming to see, oh my gosh, that's what I have to do. Like I liken it to, I don't know if you, if you were like, if you had a giant stack of laundry, dirty laundry, you had like five laundry baskets full of dirty laundry. And you know, so your kid's like, don't worry, mom, we only have to do one today. You're still going to be like, ugh, because you got four left to do. Well, you know, so maybe it's like that. I don't know, because we don't have a lot of, uh, my one son's very like explaining emotional things. The other one, no. So I have to, you have to kind of guess, right? Like, but I assume that's what it must feel like. So that was a problem with that. So the yes maths are minimal math. Minimal math you can get on Etsy, it's $6 a year. Most people use it as a review, but you can use it as, okay, but it has no explanations. So it's just going to be like, okay, there's 10 separate problems covering 10 separate areas on a page and you do one page a week. And so you can see what they don't get right. Like if they don't know how to tell time, okay, look that up on YouTube and you can watch videos there about that. So you can piece it together. It is a bit more work, but I mean, at the same time, it's minimal. So if, you know what I mean? Like you can get through it and fast if that's what you need. There's also one, I have one here to show you. It is called, I wanna say it's called Math Made Easy. And it it came new and somehow it just got a little damaged. <laughs> I know. So this is, oh, Learn Math Fast System, volume one. So let me show you in here. So it is, you can learn it very quickly in one year if you wanted to. So if you just want, cause we're not all going on to be math geniuses and we own calculators people. So three plus two equals five, just working with pennies, all right? And you do this, it tells you, use the coins to answer the following questions. Now the thing is, is you're gonna stay on, oops, you're gonna stay on this concept, adding and subtracting numbers up to five until they get it and then you move on until they get it and then they move on. So it's, I mean, it's just, it, I debated using it with my son who has autism. I debated using it with him. That's why I got it. But anyway, so, so adding a tracker's numbers up to seven. That's another thing with Math Mammoth of why it can see, seem overwhelming. <laughs> it's because you have 60 questions 
with the addition for eight. You have 60 questions, for example, addition of seven. 60 questions of additions of nine. So I, I can see, and even for me after a while, I was like, oh goodness, oh goodness, oh goodness. And I'm not saying they didn't need it because, you know, I, yeah, absolutely, it's, they needed it. I'm just saying, just even for me, it was a little overwhelming. And math, I always had a lot of colors. So this is, so how I would do this, I showed you in the last video. In the last video, I show you how I test them. We do drills. One day we'll do math, the next day we do drills. And drills is super easy. So if your kid's not in the mood that day, well, you've done drills. And so what it is, is you stand on one side of the room and you could, if you have a giant dice, you could throw the dice and then be like, all right, that plus what? So say a five comes up, will give you eight. What plus that, or so a five is rolled. What plus that gives you eight? Okay, so you can tailor it to their age, to their needs, to their whatever. Like what plus, the, I don't know, what plus that equals six? Okay, six plus zero. If it's a five, five plus one. So you can tailor it to that or you can have them stand at that side and be like, okay, I'm gonna drill you now. You get to get a jump every time you do it right. But when they get it wrong, I'm like, oh, you were so close. I'm never like wrong. I mean, it's not, I just have a hard time with that. I'm. I'm I'm, I'm not, whatever, I, I can't even apologize for that. But I'm like, oh, you were so close, ah! You wanna try again, you want me to give you a hint or you want me to give you the answer or whatever. So anyway, that's how we do it. So drills, drill from that side. I so showed you yesterday, I didn't bring it in here, but a math, a math drill book. Oh, I wanted to show you this for their sleep. This guy, he's an otter and he, he breathes. He's tummy breeze. Now, the downside is, is, so you'll see his tummy move unless we broke him already, which is just, oh no, did we break him? There he goes. Is his tummy going? No, we successfully broke him. Well, it's not a product I recommend for two reasons. One, because we broke it and we only use it at night. And two, although great concept, right? Uh, is you can't shut the music in at night. It is shockingly loud, like, if someone wakes up in the night and puts it on, it is shockingly loud. He's like, what, what? Like, what, what was that? Um, but the other math we love is, let me see. Oh, math with confidence was great. It was great. I just didn't want to spend that much time. It's a lot of game oriented. I just didn't want to spend that much time doing games because when you have a few kids, it just wasn't my thing. Um, so, but again, it didn't take long. It was great, great curriculum, hundred percent, beautiful, wonderful. I have nothing but good things to say about it, but we chose Singapore primary. Now there's a lot, of, there's four different Singapores. It's kind of confusing. Dimensions was the American version because he's gifted at math. And I like the way they did drills in it. And I like the games that they have in it. I wanted something though, again, because he's advanced in it. I wanted, I chose this curriculum very carefully just because I thought it would propel him. I don't know, I just I just think it's a great, great curriculum. I'm quite happy with it. We've been using it for a while. So it's Singapore mathematics. Now we, again, don't use the workbook. I, he sits in my lap and we go through the textbook and we're like, but another great one is Beast Academy. It's kind of the same concept, but you have to start a little older because it starts like counting to 20 is like their first thing. Do you know what I mean? Like groups of 20, well, groups of 10, but counting to 20. So when we first started, I have A, B, C, D, E. It goes by letters. There's also an online version of it. It's supposed to be kind of fun. But um, the, but anyway, it didn't start. It's also mastery. I like mastery math. I personally do. I just found math math a little overwhelming. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's whatever math you like. Now, again, there's four different maths for Singapore. I wanted Singapore. It's the number one country in math. That doesn't mean it's the best math. It doesn't mean it's the best math. That's just what I chose because I'm the one that has to teach it. And I can't teach spiral to save my life. I was so overwhelmed of math when I was young that if you put spiral in front of me, no, no, no. Cause like we're learning about addition and now you're going to, I now I'm supposed to teach them about time. And now we're going back and we're going to talk about shapes and then, oh, come on. No, I got to nail down addition before we move on. <laughs> So just for me, um, spiral. So that's why I like it. I like Singapore mathematics. I do have, I do use a different one for my kid who has autism, a different math. If you want me to do a video on it, I will. Um, but however, there we go. That's why I use, uh, let me get to the point of what I was trying to say. Because there are four different Singapore mathematics, I wanted the one that was originally from Singapore. The original one. I didn't want the one that was changed to meet California standards or the one that was changed 
to be more usable in schools. Um, I wanted in American schools, I just wanted the original Singapore mathematics, but translating English. Speaking of which, they have a science and I want to get their science. It looks pretty sweet. The science is different than the math. The science, you got to buy a few grades up. Um, but however, we're not here to talk about that because I don't have that yet because I'm waiting till I finish the two sciences I have now. But in the video, I'm attaching at the end, it's rating all the math curriculums that I've purchased. So it's rating all of them. I forgot Beast Academy, but it's rating all of them and giving you a little summary of them. In that video, I go through and I talk about the different types of Singapore mathematics, how to tell them apart and which one is for which situation and which scenario. Because it's so complicated, I'll refer you to that video instead of explaining it again, because it involves opening up their website, it involves going through, it's somewhat complicated to say the least. So anyway, I refer you to that video at the end. I think it's pink. No, that was the science one. It's uh, just a jumble. It, it's a bunch of pictures of different math books at the end. Um, but I think it says uh, Singapore in the title. So I will attach at the end of this video. I will also attach whatever, whatever other video I mentioned here. Oh, the ADHD one. I mentioned it. And next time I will do my best to talk about ADHD sleep. I'm putting the list together now of what I do. <laughs> And uh, anyway, okay, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.